Hey, the playoffs have started. It's been a good first week, but it gets hot now. Regionals coming up right here on Hockey Time. Hockey Time is presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare. Also presented by Alta Equipment Company, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. For all things Michigan High School Hockey, go to the hub, mihshockeyhub.com. National Coney Island, Dog Gone Good. The Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. And the Detroit Medical Center. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Go where the pros go. Visit dmc.org slash game changers. Hey, what is up? Welcome back into the studio along with my broadcast partner, John Kidd. My name is Sean Belegian. Johnny, fantastic week. I know you were out during the week. I was out every night. I mean, what more could you ask for first week of the playoff? Absolutely. And we have a great show in store for you this week. We have highlights of selected regional semifinal action. I go to Livonia for this week's Coach's Corner. And we'll have an update in our National Coney Island High School Hockey Player of the Year update. Hey, let's get right into it. The highlights from this past week. You don't do it for me. You don't do it for your staff. You don't do it for your parents. You do it for the other guys next to you in the yellow jersey, right? That's the most important thing. That's what you've been playing for the entire year. Nothing changes. I'm Greg Molson at the Ann Arbor Ice Cube for a Division Three Regional Semifinal. The Dexter Dreadnoughts looking to beat their rivals from Chelsea for the second time this season. But the Bulldogs came in with some confidence after tying the SEC White Champs in their second meeting of the season. And the dogs strike first, shorthanded. Gabe Bowles picks off the pass and streaks down the ice, picking the corner to give Chelsea the lead just two minutes in. It only takes a minute and a half, though, for the Dreadnoughts to answer. Brendan Bustaker's first shot is stopped, but he gets to the loose puck and flips it in from the other side to make it one all. But the tie only lasts for a minute as Tyler Valick flips it ahead to Voles for another breakaway and another goal, getting the lead right back for Chelsea. And there was more to come for the Bulldogs as Devin McIntyre then scores two more still in the first. He picks the corner on the second to make it 4-1, to one, Chelsea stunning Dexter in the first. The Dreadnoughts fight back though with two goals in the second, both coming off the stick of Nate Neistat. He tips the shot from Jonathan Roosevelt to cut the lead to just one going into the third. But the Bulldogs hold on to their lead and they add to it. McIntyre capping off the scoring with his third goal of the game. The freshman with a hat trick as Chelsea beats Dexter 6-3, moving on to the regional final. You know what, it made it 10 times better. We knew going into this game, you know what, all the other games wouldn't matter if we just ended their season. We got the final say, final laugh. Really good game, hats off to them. They played hard, we played hard. Um, I just think at the end of the day, we, we, we had a really good first period and that helped. And uh, we, we had the lucky bounces in the third and I think that's why kind of we're moving on. I'm Zach Herrick from the West Michigan area. A regional semifinal at Southside Ice Arena on Saturday evening between Grand Rapids Catholic Central and Matawan. The Cougars would waste no time getting going just over a minute in. The freshman Shane Kwiatkowski with the shot. It saved, but Zach Grabowski is there for the rebound and put back 1-0 Catholic Central early. But from there, Matawan goaltender Brendan Pellerito would dial in. He gets peppered at the net, but makes about three of his 25 first period saves. It'd be 1-0 Cougars at intermission. And in the second, GRCC on the power play. They attack the net. The puck remains loose, and Ben Clay is there to poke it home. Two-zip Catholic Central with 11 minutes left in the second. And at the end of the period, they threaten to make it a three-goal game. Jacob Onstock gets the steal, skates in on the breakaway, 
but Pellerito makes a great glove save to keep it a two-goal game instead. To the third period, the Cougars put the game on ice. Nathan Rubline skates the length of the ice and buries it top shelf. Grand Rapids Catholic Central outshoots Matawan 58-6 in the 3-0 victory. We're ready. They're ready. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great night. This is why we play high school hockey with games and nights like this. It's that simple. All right? Are we ready? Yeah! yeah. Let's go. Let's go. I'm Sean Belegian and we go to a Division II regional semifinal at the Eddie Edgar Ice Arena in Livonia as Novi took on South Lion Unified. And the Lakes Valley Conference champ South Lion would get on the board just four minutes into this one. It's the junior, Mitchell Scamera, came in with 35 goals on the season, snaps it top right corner, Unified out to a 1-0 lead. We go just a few minutes later. South line knocking on the door again. Scamira rips the one-timer into the back of the net. His second goal of the game. And that increases their lead to 2 to nothing. Now, Novi finished the season unbeaten in 10 of their last 11 games. And they would respond just moments later on the man advantage. It would be the junior, Tanish Nishanametla, at the right place in front to put in his sixth goal on the season. He trims the deficit to one and the Wildcats would add another one. Junior Isaac Gibbs puts it on the net. The puck trickles in for his team leading 18th goal on the year, and we're tied at two. South Lion now with a good chance to take the lead back before the end of the first. John Gardner off, but no by netminder. Austin Muirhead comes up with a huge save. 2-2 after the opening period. We go now under seven minutes to go in the second. Novi once again capitalizing on the power play. It would be the senior, Sharma, getting the pass, puts it home. Wildcats go into third, leading by a goal. It would be all Novi in the final stanza. Two on one opportunity. It's Gibbs sliding it over to Jay Nadu, and the senior finishes to put the Wildcats up by a pair. Then a few minutes later, Novi on the man advantage. It would be Sharma putting in another goal. He finishes the night with a Hattie. The Novi faithful all fired up as the Wildcats go on to beat South Lion Unified 7-2 your final. They'll face Livonia Stevenson in the Division II Regional Final. All right, it's time now for our Coach's Corner, brought to you by our friends at the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. I'm joined today by the head coach at Livonia Churchill, Jason Reynolds. Jason, welcome to Hockey Time. Thank you. Happy to be here. All right, you guys are in the regional finals for the second time in three years. Let's talk about this run so far. It's been a great, uh, a great postseason thus far. We, uh, um, you know, we, we've had our share of, of adversity this year, as we always do with a, with a KLAA schedule that we play and. Um, you know, we're a year older than we were last year. We had a bit of a transition year last year, but um, we have a lot of guys who are, are, are much more confident this year and have really come together as a, as a team overall. There's a great bond in our, our locker room right now, and that seems to be carrying over to the ice, and that's been, that's been very important. So we've had our, uh, our uh, hills and valleys over the regular season, but now that we're focused on the postseason run, it's been, uh, it's been all uphill so far. Right, and talk about just playing in the KLA to prepare for this uh, tournament run. Well, I mean, you you get the you get the best of the best in the state, and and I've I've always said over the years that you know a lot of our success in the postseason can really be attributed to just the adversity that you play um, day in and day out with the the KLAA. I mean, it, you know, we're we're well represented in the state playoffs every year, which is um, something I think we all take pride in, despite the fact that we're all competing with each other. And so, um, I, I think coming into this se this postseason, we're we're well prepared based on that schedule, and uh, and I feel optimistic about uh, about everything coming up. And what are your th early thoughts on the three week playoff format so far? So far, so good. I like the um, I like the additional rest period that you get. It's it's much less daunting. It, it replicates that NCAA tournament schedule, which I, I think is a good thing. You get a couple of extra quality days of practice rather than, you know, just trying to fit in a light skate here and there. Um, I'm sure some people may disagree with that and just want to get it over with. But I I, I think the um, for the sake of the players as well as even the 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 student bodies that are, are participating as well. So we get down to the the stretch 
stretch run here, and I think it'll be good as as some teams will be traveling from uh, from different parts of the state, give them an opportunity to have more of a fan presence there. I think the atmosphere at USA Hockey Arena will be um, will be even that much more tremendous, more so than it already is. And um, so so far so good. I, I think I think this will be uh, this will be well received in the years to come. And lastly, I always ask each coach this: Why you do this each and every day for the boys? It's just a passion. It, it's it's easy to come to the rink every day. Um, it's 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 a bit of a. Some coaches say it's a bit of a bug. Um, if if you're like me and you've you've grown up in the in the arena and you've you've played and now coached, I mean it's 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 something that that motivates you every single season and so I've enjoyed the relationships I've, I've built with the student athletes over the years. Um, we have a fantastic athletic program at Churchill. We have the best athletic director in the state with Mark Haig and uh, I, I can't thank him enough. We've got a great staff here on hand and, and it's just it's been a, a first class experience so uh, so no slowing down for me yet. Jason, thank you very much for joining us here on Hockey Time, and good luck to you guys the rest of the way. Thank you. Appreciate it. And that was our Coach's Corner, brought to you by our friends at the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. Hey, high school hockey fans, join your fellow hockey fans at Little Caesars Arena and witness the top college teams compete for the NCAA National Championship. All session, single day, and group tickets options are now available at NCAA.com backslash Frozen Four or Little Caesars Arena Xfinity Box Office. The Frozen Four experience is something you do not want to miss. You can also take in the Frozen Fest right outside the LCA in the Chevrolet Plaza. The Interactive Hockey Fan Fest is free to the public. Bring the kids or get together with a group of your hockey boys by locking in your chance to see the NCAA Hockey Championship. Tickets available now at NCAA.com backslash Frozen Four. The State Champ Sports Network is located on the incredible campus that is Lawrence Technological University. This university has so much to offer. It's still the best kept secret in the Midwest. I am encouraging all families that can hear me to take a visit. Cutting edge learning, small class sizes, incredible internship and networking opportunities, 26 varsity level NAIA sports. Daily tours are offered Monday through Thursday, and blue and white days are offered on select Fridays. Group tours for schools and community groups are also available. For questions or more information, contact the Office of Admissions at 248-204-3160 or email admissions at ltu.edu. Hi, I'm Laura Ramos with DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. And today on Game Changers, we're gonna be going over blood flow restriction training. Blood flow restriction is a training technique used by adolescent to elite athletes to improve performance. It's also utilized by athletes if they're injured or had surgery for the rehabilitation process. What it includes is restricting your blood flow in both your arms and your legs to help increase strength and it does this by letting you use a lighter load or less weight and still get the benefits of a heavy load or a heavy weight. Start with some bicep exercises. We pump up the cuffs and he's gonna use a light weight. In this case, only five pounds. But this five pound bicep curl with the BFR bands on allows him to get the same benefit as bicep curling 25 pounds. He'll start out with about 15 repetitions. He'll rest for a minute in between, and then repeat that 15 repetitions for three sets with one minute rests in between. So add BFR training while you're in your season to maintain your strength without fatiguing your performance. Or if you've had an injury, you can recover a lot quicker by having less load on that injured tissue and get back onto the field sooner. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Then go where the pros go. DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. For immediate care, call 313-910-9328 or visit dmc.org slash game changers. We go to a D3 regional semifinal from Saturday afternoon as the two-time defending state champ, Detroit Country Day, take on the 17-time state champ, the Cranes from Cranbrook, Kingswood. 
Country Day, coming into the playoffs at 22-3, would capitalize on a five-minute power play in the first. It would be the senior, Gino Sessa, wristing it from the point. It finds its way into the goal, and the Yellow Jackets out to a 1-0 lead. DCD would add another one from that power play just a few minutes later. Lucas Kroll, who's in our state champs all-junior watch, right place, right time, puts it into the back of the net to give the Yellow Jackets a two-goal advantage. Cranbrook would trim into that deficit with under four minutes to go in the first as the sophomore defenseman Michael Brown, Rister, gets in for the goal and the Cranes trail 2-1 after one. Country Day would capitalize on another man advantage opportunity in the second. It's Kroll ripping the slapper, top right corner, his second goal on the game. Yellow Jackets back up 3-1. Cranbrook comes right back as the sophomore Ty Esterline gets the puck, snaps it home, and the Cranes now down by a goal again at 3-2. But it would be too much Country Day on this afternoon. It's Kroll once again turning, firing, and he gives himself the hattie. Detroit Country Day goes on to beat Cranbrook 4-2 your final. They'll face Pinckney in the regional finale. They were fired up in Brighton where they're hoping their Bulldogs are ready to make another long postseason run. The Dogs hosting the team that knocked them out of the playoffs last year and beat them earlier this season, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I'm Greg Molson, and it's the Eaglets scoring first. Charles Thornton streaking down the side, lets it fly and finds the net, giving St. Mary's the lead just over three minutes in. Takes less than five minutes for the Bulldogs to tie it up though, with a great play off the faceoff, Braden McDonald to Landon McDonald to make it one apiece. Still in the first, it's Brighton on the power play, but it's St. Mary's getting the goal. Chris Petrilla gets behind the defense. He goes to the backhand for the goal, putting the Eaglets up two to one after the first. Brighton answers again early in the second. It's Colin Ryder breaking free, showing off his speed and his moves, filling the net to make it two all. And that's how it stays into the third. St. Mary's with a great chance to take the lead. Connor Heikela all alone, but Chris Wozniak makes the kick save. At the other end, check out Lars Urkela with the great pass in front to Logan Mitchell. He buries it, giving Brighton its first lead of the game, and the Bulldogs would not give it away. Wozniak with another big save in the final minutes on Brendan Dell, and Brighton holds on to win it 3-2, Moving on. Gaylord versus Alpina. Here we go. The game remains scoreless until the second frame when the Wildcats try to clear the puck out of their zone, but they can't. Sam Gorno is there to bury it. Blue Devils take the lead up 1-0 late in the period, and here comes Gaylord's Nate Klein Sorge on the breakaway. And yeah, he's just going to sneak it past Colin Lightfoot for the goal. The Wildcats get shut out and fall in this one to the Blue Devils 2-0. The Sioux and Gaylord will battle it out for a regional title on Wednesday at Northern Lights Arena as puck drop is scheduled for 6 p.m. All right, it's time now for our main event brought to you by the Alta Equipment Company. How about the beauty between Howell and Clarkston? This is Greg Molson in Brighton for a Division I regional semifinal. The Clarkston Wolves taking on the Howell Highlanders. Both teams coming in at 15 and 10. And just like their records, this game was about as even as could be. Howell scores first with the Cam connection. Cam Sturros behind the net setting up Cam Nitschman for the quick one-timer, giving the Highlanders the lead just over five minutes in. Clarkston ties it up in the final minute of the first period. The Wolves with a three on one, and it's Cameron Thomas shooting at himself right into the back of the net to make it one all after the first 17 minutes of play. It remained deadlocked through the second with the Highlanders killing off a five on three advantage for the Wolves for over a minute. Ian Badgett with a big save on Ryan Galligan. On to the third, Clarkston on the power play off the faceoff. It's Logan McGivern winning the race to the puck. He shoots and it just trickles in, giving the Wolves the lead. 
The Highlanders in need of the equalizer and they find it with less than four minutes to play. Everett Patillo with the shot, Cam Sturros with the rebound, tying it at two all and sending the game into overtime. Howell then gets a big break just minutes in as Brandon Eall draws a penalty on the big hit along the boards, giving the Highlanders a power play and they take advantage. Steven Miller showing great patience, holding onto the puck until he gets the perfect angle. Howell wins a thriller, three to two over Clarkston. Steven Miller with the game winner, and he received a hero's welcome in the locker room. The main event is presented by the Alta Equipment Company, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. All right, welcome back inside the studios brought to you by the Alta Equipment Company. So, Sean, in our main event, Howell beats Clarkson 3-2 to in overtime. Yeah, sounded like a dandy, no doubt about it. You know, uh, we've been talking about Howell all year. That's a good team. Uh, I don't want to say they've been flying under the radar because certainly a year ago maybe you could say they were flying under the radar. This year, I think they've established themselves as a pretty good team. Uh, props to Clarkson giving it all they had against a good team like Howell, but Howell moves on. All right, you took in the game between Dearborn Unified and Salem last week. Dearborn Unified almost shocked the, the high school hockey in the state of Michigan, but Salem came back and won 65. It was a great game. And I, you know, I think sometimes you use the word great too use loosely. It was a great game. It was an exciting game. Uh, what more can you say about Crossland? I mean, the, the numbers are legitimate. He put on a show. Uh, but Salem, you know, there's something to that team. There's a medal with that team, a tenacity with that team. They didn't panic. There were a few times during the course of the game where you kind of thought, all right, this might be it. But they came fighting back, found a way to win that game. So certainly setting up what should be a good matchup against Northville. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later in the show. And how about Lance Cruz Unified scoring six unanswered goals to beat Macomb, Dakota, 6-3? to three. You know, they're another one of those teams. We saw them last year when we were out at, at the, the showcase. But they're another one of those teams that, you know, don't overlook them. We, we talk about those teams not to overlook. And I think we mentioned them last week. I could be wrong. If we didn't mention them, we're mentioning them now. Uh, that's something, especially at playoff time, uh, to put on a show like that. So uh, that'll be a team to watch. In Division Two, both Sean and I were at the Novi and South Line Unified Regional Semifinal on Friday night. Novi got down 2 0 right off the bat, but they scored seven unanswered to beat South Island Unified 7 2. Yeah, they've got it going on. You know, I mean, really, I think it starts with their young goaltender, the sophomore. Austin Muirhead, but you know what? I don't want to take anything away from the rest of the team because the team has really stepped up, and there's a reason why we put them uh, in our rankings the last uh, ranking period, John, and, and I think they've proven to everybody that they deserve to be there. That'll be a good one with Stevenson. And finally, in Division Three, we talked about in our show last week like it could possibly be a Gross Point South UED Jesuit regional final. Well, it's going to be a Gross Point South, Gross Point Woods University Liggett regional final as they upset UAD 5-3. to three. Yeah, somebody forgot to tell Liggett that, huh? I mean, that that's that's the way that it works. And you know what? I, I, I had the opportunity to get some thoughts from Coach Maltese, and he's done a, a tremendous job there. You know, he said it started with their goaltender. You know, Grant Lindsay's a, a young man that, that really stepped up, had a big night. I believe 46 saves was the, the number that I heard. It's interesting, John, because during the course of the year, you have – Different coaches and players and parents talk to you, and a lot of people mentioned to me Doug Wood. Uh, he is an outstanding uh, sophomore at Liggett. He had a monster year. You can look up the numbers, uh, but I guess he was special, and Coach Maltese made a point to say to me, you can't mention Wood without mentioning uh, his his uh, partner in crime as well. And so this is a situation where, you know, right now you've got uh, a couple of good young players up front. You've got uh, a goaltender as well. So, hey, things are working really well for this team, and they're really going to give GPS all they can handle. And we're going to preview all the regional finals in just a little bit here on Hockey Time. What's up, hockey fans? If you're also looking to get the latest highlights and news in boys basketball, you need to check out State Champs Hang Time Michigan. We comb the state for some of the best matchups featuring some of the top teams and players. 
State Champs Hang Time Michigan is for hoops junkies and it premieres right here on the State Champs Sports Network and the State Champs app Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. All right, it's time now for our National Coney Island High School Hockey Player of the Year update. So, Sean, extra onions, right? Yeah, you know what? It was great. We I was at a couple games this week uh, where people were kind of saying extra onions, and it was like, yes, absolutely, extra onions all day. You see your top ten on the screen, like we talked about last week, and it's going to remain that way for the rest of the season. So, Sean, this is where the criteria really gets in the gear with these big game performances. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things, John, where here's the criteria again. Uh, you can read the criteria yourself and see that, you know, this is still a winnable race, really, for for a number of guys on this list. So uh, this is the time where you make the name. This is the time where, you know, people start to talk about you. You know, earlier in the show, uh, we were we were talking about a particular sophomore where you know what he's planted some seeds as well where you're looking ahead to next year oh we're gonna have to keep an eye on this so yeah definitely this is the time that people remember so uh, you want to make a name for yourself make it right now all right remember you can cast your vote at statechampsnetwork.com so next monday we're going to be ending the vote at 12 o'clock so whoever leads the vote at 12 o'clock next monday will be the online vote winner in our National Coney Island High School Hockey Player of the Year race. As of right now, it's still Joey Cormier from Trenton. And I just want to remind you that winning the online vote only gets you a 20% chance of winning the award. It doesn't make you the winner. So we just wanted to clear that up as we get going here the last couple weeks. You're one of four finalists. You're automatically in. There's a final four. You're automatically one of them. But it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be the winner. All right, remember, so cast your votes up until next Monday, and that was your High School Hockey Player of the Year update, brought to you by our friends at National Coliana. We are officially in March now, and undoubtedly, this is the craziest month in Michigan high school sports. And aren't you lucky? You have two great resources to keep up with all of it. State Champs always bringing you highlights and analysis of the busy state championship season. And how about our partners at the Michigan High School Athletic Association? Just this week, over 200 live events on MHSAA.tv and the NFHS Network. The monthly subscription is less than 40 cents a day, and you can access live games all over the country, not just Michigan. Check it all out at MHSAA.tv. All right, it's time now to preview the regional finals that is going to be happening on Wednesday night. And we're going to start in Division Three. Midland Dow takes on Flint Powers. Midland Dow took them out 5-1 to one earlier in the season. Part of the reason why many people, including yours truly, think that Division Three is the most intriguing this year are teams like this. These are two good teams. You, you've seen them play well during the course of the season. Uh, Powers, in particular, really started to pick it up late in the year. We go to the west side of the state. Grand Rapids Catholic Central takes on Forest Hill Central. Forest Hill Central uh, beat CC 3-1 to one earlier in the season. Yeah, you know, uh, Lumen Christie, by all accounts, they were the real deal. We had them uh, ranked, and that was an epic game between Forest Hill Central and, and Lumen Christie. The path doesn't get easier for them. Mike Slobodnik and the Cougars are waiting. All right, Livonia Churchill is going for a second regional title in the last three years. They take on Chelsea in an afternoon battle at the Cube. Oh, that's awesome. And, and you know, props again to Jason Re Reynolds and the Chargers. You know, they had a very memorable run a couple of years ago. How about Chelsea? That's a team that I, I'm not sure a lot of people thought they were going to be there. Keep an eye on that one. All right, we head down river. Riverview gave a Richard taking on Riverview. It's the third meeting this season with Riverview beating them both earlier in the season. Yeah, two teams that have been ranked at various points and times during the season. I think a lot of people thought that this is what we would see. It's hard to beat a team three times, so we'll see if Riverview can do that. All right, we head up north. Houghton and Calumet for the fourth time this season. Unbelievable. I mean, it, it really is. And Calumet has a 2 and one record. I mean, Calumet, I, I think... For a large portion of the year was the class of Division Three. They're certainly right up there right now. I'm not sure you can pick a you know, team in Division Three right now, but don't count out Houghton. I mean, we know what they can do. We know how hard they play. That should be a dandy. I wish I was in the UP then for that one. All right, we stay in that northern Michigan area. Sault Ste. Marie taking on Gaylord. Yeah, Gaylord's an interesting story. You know, this is... Props to them. Uh, this is going to be a good one for them. I know they beat uh, the Sioux earlier this year, but interesting story up there. All right, Country Day, who you saw earlier in the show, they are going to be taking on Pickney and 
Country Day is on a roll right now. Yeah, if if you ask me to pick a favorite in Division Three, I'm obviously going to take the team that I thought would win it, and that and that's Detroit Country Day. They've been on John to reiterate what you're saying. They've been on some kind of a roll for over a month now. So Pinckney's going to be up against it. All right, and then we have the battle of Gross Point in Division Three as Gross Point South takes on Liggett. Well, dandy. I mean, so many of these guys know each other. The coaches know each other. The players know each other. And and, and listen, when you got a couple guys uh, getting it done up front, it's it's Hutchison and, and Wood, and you got a goaltender in, in in Lindsay doing what he's doing. They're going to put a scare in, in GPS. Who again? They could make the argument that perhaps they're the team to beat in Division Three. All right, we go to Division Two on the west side of the state. Rockford takes on Grand Rapids, Forest Hills, Northern Eastern. Rockford beat them 4-2 to a few weeks ago. Well, this is a big test for the Rams because N.E., you have to give them their props. Playoff time is when they seem to respond. They've made many runs in years gone by. So the Rams are going to look to maybe – add a chapter to their story this year by taking out a team that has perennially had success come playoff time. And we go to mid-Michigan. Heartland's on a roll when it comes to the regional time. They they just get on cruise control, but they do take on Davidson on Wednesday night. Yeah, this Davidson team is a team that in the last couple of years has certainly taken a, a step back up, and boy, could they make a name for themselves if they can knock off the back-to-back Division II champions. All right, we have Livonia Stevenson taking on Novi at the Eddie Egger Ice Arena. This is going to be an interesting battle between two KLA teams. Yeah, you know, in the first time that they played, Stevenson knocked them off three to nothing. This is a different Novi team from them, no doubt about it. Uh, Stevenson certainly been one of the top teams in Division Two, but there's something to be said about the hot team, and Novi's red hot right now. All right, Trenton coming off two wins over Ann Arbor schools in Skyline and Ann Arbor Pioneer. They take on Celine. It's the third year they have met in the regional. Speaking of teams that seem to pick up their play every year, and it's not like Trenton's played poorly. Please don't misconstrue. But this is a team come playoff time. They seem to kick, kick it up a notch. And again, you know, when you have a goalie like Joey Cormier, uh, I, I'm telling you what, you, you, anything is possible. So look out for Trenton. All right, we have Brother Rice taking on Lake Orion at the Oak Park Ice Rink. You know, a lot of people told me that that Lake Orion is is a, a team to keep an eye on and, and to look out for. They're going to have to have the game of their lives. I, I think Brother Rice is the favorite in Division Two for a reason. They're going to have to have the game of their lives. We have a MAC battle in the in Division Two as Port Huron Northern take on Chippewa Valley. Yeah, is that intriguing? Good for Port Huron Northern and. You know, a legendary coach there in his last year. You know he wants to keep it going as far as they can. So keep an eye on that one. All right, we head back up north as Escanaba taking on Marquette. Marquette has won both meetings. Yeah, Marquette is a team that I think a lot of people uh, penciled into uh, the the final four. I, I think Traverse City Central will have something to say about that. Maybe the Eskimos will as well, but I like Marquette in that one. All right, and we head back to the west side of the state as Muskegon Mona Shores takes on Traverse City Central. This is probably the, one of the most intriguing uh, regional finals in Division Two. No, I agree with you. I mean, Traverse City Central has, has been uh, solid around top 10 all year, and much like a lot of coaches told me before the year started, uh, keep an eye on Mona Shores come playoff time, and they started to pick it up late in the regular season, and here they are, a great opportunity to punch their way into the next round. And finally, in Division One, we have another Traverse City versus Muskegon battle as Traverse City West takes on Muskegon Reese Puffer. Well, we, we talked about it, John, all year. There's some good hockey being played up in the Traverse City area. The Titans certainly have, have taken the step back in the right direction. A big test against Reese Puffer. On the west side of state, we have Byron Center taking on Holland West Ottawa with both teams splitting the regular season series. Yeah, and that should be a dandy. You know, Byron Center is a team that has really taken a a step up recently. West Ottawa has made a run. That should be a one to put a circle around. All right, Detroit Catholic Central, they're on a roll. They take on Birmingham Unified. Yeah, I I had a chance to see both of these teams the other day. Both of these teams win going away. Uh, Catholic Central still too much depth, but that Birmingham Unified team, there's some talent on that team. We have a KLAA battle between Northville and Salem in the regionals. Well, you know, Northville all year, it's funny. We always said don't pay attention to the record. That's a team, especially playing in the conference that they play in, and the schedule that they play that's maybe better than the record indicates, and it starts in net for them. But uh, Salem right now, uh, boy, just a complete team. You know, nothing jumps out at you. You just, I like the way that Salem plays. All right, we have Kalamazoo United taking on the mid-Michigan squad. 
Yeah, isn't this going to be interesting? They played a 7-6 game just a few short weeks ago. So uh, if, if you're one of those people that like some scoring, you might see it in this one. And we have Saginaw Heritage taking on Bay City. Uh, Heritage won the matchup earlier in December. Yeah, you know, it just keeps rolling for Heritage. Uh, you know, I, I've said it once, I said it a hundred times, uh, Coach Bamberger's done such a fantastic job there. Heritage, it's going to be tough for anybody to beat Heritage. Lance Cruz Unified coming off that big win over Macomb, Dakota. Hopefully they can take that momentum going into playing Rochester United. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I mean, we, we talked about it before that this is a team that has made some noise. So is RU. I mean, let's not forget the run that RU made and the goaltending that you saw uh, out of RU. So, yep, got a circle around this one, too. And finally, the most intriguing Division One regional final is going to be Howell and Bright. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, you're talking about a scenario. These guys all know each other. They're familiar with each other. Brighton is expected to be there. Howell is expected to be here, but I don't think many people thought that they'd get past this point. You really, really want to make a statement? Knock off Brighton. I mean, that could be a big statement for the Highlanders. It's going to be a good one. It's time now for the MHSAA Hockey Clip of the Week, and this is courtesy of the Livonia Stevenson hockey team. In the regional semifinal on Friday night against Canton, Carson Clevin for the Spartans with a Michigan move, picking the puck up behind the net and wraps it in for the goal. And that's your MHSAA Hockey Clip of the Week. John, that's going to do it. Hey, I know we're going to be busy this week. I know both you and I are going to be out Wednesday and Saturday. So, as always, looking forward to it. And, you know, just a personal note, uh, we really appreciate the kind words. Thank you. It means a lot. This is something that we're very passionate about and we love, and this is the best time of year. All right. And remember, you can follow State Champs on all of our social media channels. And you can download the new State Champs app that is available on iPhone and Android. Next week, we'll recap the quarterfinals and preview the final four out at USA Hockey Arena. All right, so that's it for another edition of State Champs Hockey. We'll see you at the rink. State Champs Hockey Time is presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare. Also presented by Alta Equipment Company, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. For all things Michigan High School Hockey, go to the hub, mihshockeyhub.com. National Coney Island, dog gone good. The Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. And the Detroit Medical Center. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Go where the pros go. Visit dmc.org slash game changer.